All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Bass Quest. I'm super excited because today I found something I've been looking for all year, and that's freshwater jellyfish. That's right. If any of y'all are familiar with my channel, I fish. I'm a big time fisherman. I love to fish Lake Chickamauga. Lake Chickamauga is on the Tennessee River system, and it is hundreds, hundreds of miles away from the ocean. And yet, once a year, in the dog days of summer, in the back of a couple creeks over here, jellyfish hatch out. I'm not kidding, jellyfish. Not clickbait, but make sure you like and subscribe. But check this out. Come up on this bad boy. Look at that. this water wasn't as murky as it is right now this year we haven't had a lot of them just because there's been a lot of rain we're way back in a creek system right now and that's where these things hatch out we, we kind of think from our experience they hatch out around a spring back here but they're way back in this little creek system and it's just for a, a couple weeks out of the year it's usually around August or so when it's dog days of summer is when they hatch out and I think um, me and Chris think that the reason why they haven't really hatched out this year is because we've had so much rainfall and it's kept the water temp down, um, which has been great for fishing, but not good for these little guys. They seem to like it when it's just like the dog days of summer, absolute nasty out here. All right, so just like saltwater jellyfish, these things are really, they, they come up higher in the water column when there's a lot more sunlight. And as this storm starts to come my way, there's less and less sunlight and what I'm noticing is these jellyfish are pushing lower and lower into the water column. It's getting harder and harder to see them. But here's one right here. All right, guys, I'm gonna capture one of these bad boys by hand, hopefully, and show it to you here. Let's see what I can do here. All right, there's one in my hand. I don't know if y'all can see, I can feel him moving. It's just kind of like a little piece of gel. Watch this, I'm gonna stick him in here. There he is, moving around in there. Look at Don't feel, don't feel any stinging whatsoever. Um, I've heard of a couple of guys getting a little bit of skin irritation, swimming in the clouds of them and stuff, but I haven't really experienced any of that, so. I can't be for sure, but I didn't feel anything when I felt them just then, so. I'd say it's at least 80% safe, right? <laughs> All right, hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed filming it. I think it's really interesting that those freshwater jellyfish are all the way in here in Tennessee. And what I found interesting is I actually did some research. If you look down in the description, I've linked down a couple sites, one from National Geographic and one from another database that actually tracks invasive species. The interesting thing is those jellyfish are an invasive species. All the way back from 1880, they can track 
and see um, from somewhere in China where those things were brought over and now they are pretty prolific throughout most of the eastern part of the United States, some of the midwestern parts of the United States. I think it's pretty neat. So just take a look at that. I think I'm going to put up that image for you there. Look at all that. You can see where they've been you know, jumping around and everything, but it says on some of those sites that they actually move similar to the way fish are moved back and forth, and that's with your waterfowl. Um, the, their little pallops and things get stuck on the waterfowl and move from waterway to waterway, and that's how they're spread around, which I thought was pretty interesting. It's also kind of scary to me when I think about, you know, how bad the Asian carp are like the silver carp in Kentucky Lake and then below us in Alabama and a lot of the lakes down there. Um, it's amazing to me that, that something that was transplanted here in 1880 is still impacting us today and it's so prolific. So y'all pay attention to those invasive species. Try not to let them spread anymore. Um, we got to do something about those carp, which y'all know. But anyway, uh, I thought that was really cool. You know, another fun fact about those things, they get a, from about the size of a penny to about the size of a quarter, so not very big. Like I said, I couldn't tell that they were uh, stinging me or anything like that, so that's another interesting fact. Another interesting thing about those jellyfish is they actually indicate a healthy waterway. So if you're starting to see those around, it can tell you they're a filter feeder, they have to have a lot of microorganisms, that means that your waterway there is very healthy, you know, that's good for your bait fish, it's good for the general ecosystem. You guys make sure to comment down below. I want to hear kind of what your thoughts are on all this. Have you seen them in your waterways? You know, comment below some other lakes or ponds or areas that you've seen these jellyfish so that other people can go out and take a look at them. Also, give me a comment if you'd like to see some more videos with these freshwater jellyfish and maybe some of the other strange anomalies going on in our Tennessee River system. As always, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out and share it around with your friends. I think a lot of people would find this interesting. Ooh, there he is. Got two. Doubled up. No way they both stay on. Look at that, guys. Gotcha! <laughs> I got them both. One. Two. Just saw a wolf pack of bass swim by. Oh, didn't take much. Get him interested. That'd be a good one. There's like maybe 15 bass swam by. Threw that magic swim right behind the boat. They swam right by the boat and this guy came up and stroked it. Not bad. Not bad. Ooh, two pounder. giant rockfish. Guys. Golly. <laughs>